Hello there, students! After four months, it's finally the moment you've been waiting for. Are you excited? Because I sure am. Now then, if you're subscribed to me, you're most likely to hear from X in his video, where he demonstrated the maximum theoretical speed in Team Fortress 2 using bumper cars. He also mentioned that there were numerous console commands and variables for bumper cars that he had no idea about. Looking in the comments, neither did a few other people. The purpose of this video is to teach you everything you need to know about bumper cars. First, let's do a little history lesson. Bumper cars were released in the 2014 Screen Fortress update as part of the Carnival of Carnage. <laughs> Carnival of Carnage was a Halloween doomsday event map, which took the players to one of three minigames every time a round ended. These minigames all used bumper cars. Interestingly enough though, there are various commands and map entities that can all be utilised to make a fully fledged bumper car map. Now that that's over, there are two aspects of bumper cars I will now explain. Bumper car commands and map making for bumper cars. If you want to know about the map making aspects, see the description. Otherwise, let's get started with bumper car commands. When I made a map earlier on, I created a test track to show all the different features. I'm not going to go into every single command because there's a pretty large and complex list of commands for bumper cars. If you want to see it, there's a link in the description to a Google Docs file that goes into more detail than this video does. I do still go into a lot of detail in this video, so also in the description is a set of timestamps for particular command categories. If you want to play around with the bumper cars, these three commands are all that you need to know. Addcond82 will give a bumper car to the player that uses it. Addcond83 will give a boost to the player that uses it. And Addcond87 will lock the player in place and prevent them from turning and moving, as long as the condition is enabled. Replace Addcond with Remove Cond should you wish to remove these conditions. Please note that these commands are classed as cheats, so you might either want to modify a map to use bumper cars, or use a server plugin if you want to use them on demand. The main question you're probably wondering about is how to modify cart speed. Let's get right into it then, because I know that you're probably going to abuse the hell out of these commands. Before I start, please know that all bumper car commands have the TF Halloween cart prefix as shown here. With that said, the speed commands are normal speed, normal axel, and reverse speed. Let's kick it off with the normal speed command. Now, the format of this video is that I'm going to go through every single command one by one, and I'm going to show three values for the commands, the middle one in bold being the default. For most of them, I will also be showing small demonstration videos above each value to show what it looks like in game. The normal speed command is the top speed of the car, set to 650 by default. This value is measured in Valve's unit of speed measurement, hammer units per second. If you don't understand what a hammer unit is, it is a default unit of distance measurement in the Source engine. To get an understanding of what exactly it looks like, the bridge on two forts is almost 900 hammer units long, and each point in the test track is 200 hammer units apart. Hammer units per second, on the other hand, is a velocity measurement. For reference, the default scout moves at 400 hammer units per second. The default heavy moves at 230 hammer units per second. The fastest attainable land speed in Team Fortress 2 is 520 hammer units per second. And the demo man charges at 750 hammer units per second. The next command is normal Axel. This is your acceleration speed defaulted at 300. The unit of measurement with this one is unknown. Please note that this acceleration value only applies to speeds above 500 hammer units per second, for reasons I will explain later. And finally, we have the reverse speed command. This one's pretty self explanatory, it's just your speed for when you're reversing. It's defaulted on minus 50 as it needs to be a negative value to go backwards. If it isn't a negative value then your car will attempt to simultaneously accelerate and brake. Remember how I said earlier that normal Axel only applies to speeds above 500? That's because acceleration commands use a certain speed system. Cars have a slow state and a fast state. When the car exceeds a certain speed, which is 500 by default, it is marked as fast. And if it is slower than 500, it's slow. Slow moving Axel is a cart acceleration variable only used when the carts are in the slow state. The speed when going fast is 500 and above by default, so the normal acceleration variable from earlier only kicks in once the speed gets over 500 hammer units per second. But why stop at the speed commands? In fact, we can probably go a bit faster. The next commands are booster variables. The boost gives the car a sudden burst of speed, which can be activated with the secondary fire key. First we have boost duration, defaulted at 1.5, which is how long the boost lasts for in seconds. This is not affected by boost areas in the map, as their duration is determined by the map's entity. 
Then we have boost recharge, defaulted at 5.0. This is how long the boost will take to recharge, which is also measured in seconds. The boost speed command is dash speed, which sets the top speed of boosts, defaulted at 100. This value also applies to AdCond 83 and boost panels. There is also a possibly unused command that I can't seem to understand, which is dash Accel. It seems to set the acceleration for car boosts to reach their top speed, but oddly enough the boost is so instantaneous that this value doesn't seem to make a difference. But if you're going really fast, you might find it incredibly hard to control your cart. If this is the case, you can find these commands very useful. Turn speed commands obviously change your turn speed, meaning how sharp your turns are. Please know that these commands can be a bit unstable. The first command is fast turn speed, defaulted at 60, which is the maximum sharpness of your turns when you're at your fastest. Slow turn speed, defaulted at 100, is the maximum sharpness of your turns when you're at your slowest. Strangely enough, this value also applies to fast speeds, so I'm actually continuing research on this. These commands should rectify your control issues, but if you're still finding yourself out of control and slamming into the walls, these commands can be helpful too. Brake Accel, defaulted at 500, is how effective the brakes will be when the brake key is pressed. If it's a higher value, the car will come down to a stop quicker. Coast Accel, defaulted at 300, is how fast the car decelerates normally without any brakes. If this is set to a high number, the car will stop immediately after the player stops going forward. If this is set to a low number, the car will glide along and come to a stop slower than usual. If this is set to zero, your car won't stop unless you brake. If this is set to a negative number, however, say, minus 50, Anyway, let's get back to the commands. Reverse turn speed, defaulted at 50, changes your turn speed when your cart is reversing. And stationary turn speed, also defaulted at 50, changes your turn speed when not moving at all. In other words, when you're moving on the spot. And finally, we have the impact commands. These are commands that will affect the satisfying impacts between bumper cars. First, there's something that I have to go through regarding the bumper car damage system. Bumper cars do not use health values like in normal battle. They instead use percentages to represent damage, bearing a resemblance to the Smash Brothers series. It also works in the same way. The higher your health, the further you will be launched by impacts. This was used by the minigames to add a way in which players can lose. They could be knocked off the stage and taken out. Let's get straight into it with Impact Force, defaulted at 0.75. This sets how far players and cars will be sent flying when impacted. This also affects the damage against players not in bumper cars. If you set this variable to a really high value, say 900... Just watch. Anyway, back to the impact commands. Impact damage defaulted at 1 sets the scale for any impact damage. Interestingly enough, this only applies to cart on cart impacts. Although the damage text will show greater damage, that isn't the case. Boost impact force defaulted at 0.75 scales the impact force for boost impacts only. So this only applies if you're boosting towards your target. Impact Air Scale, defaulted at 0.75, scales the impact force for mid-air collisions. More specifically, when both the impactor and target are in mid-air during the hit, one person being in the air simply doesn't count. Impact Rate, defaulted at 0.5, sets the cooldown for impact damage. Every time a player deals impact damage to another player, they will be unable to deal any further damage to any players for a specified amount of seconds. Setting the variable to zero means that players can hit any other player at any time and removes the cooldown altogether. Impact bound scale is unknown. However, it seems to remove impacts altogether when set to zero, meaning that this is possibly related to the hitboxes. I'm still not sure about this one though, so further research is required. You're probably wondering what exactly you can use these commands for. 
Well... <laughs> but seriously though, the capability of bumper cars is seriously underrated. They could be used for a unique game mode or even add some twists to pre-existing game modes like capture the flag. If there is anyone who has a server and wants to give these commands a shot, I'm actually looking forward to seeing what you can do with this. By the way, there are a few other miscellaneous commands such as camera angles, camera following distance, etc. that I couldn't really go through all in one video. If you're wanting to know more commands and see a full manual on them all, check out the Google Docs file in the description. And if you're wanting to actually try out the race map for yourself, it's still in the beta phase, so I will not be distributing it yet. I have been considering setting up a server, and I can set one for those who want to give it a go. This ends my lecture on bumper car commands for Team Fortress 2. If you want to know how to make a bumper car map of your very own, please see the description for a link to my next video. Bye for now, and class dismissed. Hey there, before you leave, just got a quick message. Shortly after they uploaded this video, I will be uploading a second source shenanigans update which will answer a few questions. As for this video, feel free to leave comments of what you thought of it. And if you want, don't hesitate to leave comments about future suggestions or any questions. I will try to reply to every single one. I do have a link in the description to my Discord server for those who want to personally speak to me. See ya!